Good morning. It's 645 Central Standard Time, <clears throat> 745 Eastern Time. It's Lisa Copeland on Be Fierce 365. Look at my, my cup. It's the queen of everything, right? I want to say good morning to those who are joining me. So, and thank you for coming alongside this journey with me on being fierce every single day. Now, I've got a couple requests before I start the show. Number one, if you find value in this, if you love this show, if you are committed, it's no fun to be fierce by yourself. So share it out to your tribe, to your people, and encourage people to do it with you. It's only 15 minutes a day. And you know, you can say the same things that I say to people. If I can do it, you can do it. So share it, like it, please comment and let me know you were here. I'm trying to get back to all of the comments. I can't do it live because I only got 15 minutes. And I'm really holding myself to that. And, if, you know, I get on a roll. I just want to go and go. But then I'm like, I'm coming back tomorrow. So comment, like it, and share it. Those are the three things. And then if you find really great value in what I say, I'm inviting you to join our private mastermind group, which is Big Sellers Mastermind. I've got the link at the top of the post. Jump into the group. Invite friends to jump in the group. We're gaining at about 25 to 30 people a day right now. And little secret to this tribe, I'm going to put together a big seller's mastermind leadership where I'm going to allow others to come in and kind of help me lead the group. And so that, that's coming. That's kind of 2.0, but it's coming fast. I want to say good morning to those who are on here. Bob, Chris, Max, Rebecca, Aiden, Kyle. God, Kyle, what country are you in right now? Uh, Jim, Subaru Steve, my new dear friend, Nigel, Max, Eddie, yay, thank you for joining. Okay, so for you, those of you who are just joining for the first time, I'm right now I'm working on the book um, uh, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. This book changed my life. This is the book right here. It changed my life when I started going. This is the fourth time I've read it, and I decided it was perfect. Because a big part about being fierce 365 days a year is its mindset. It's absolute mindset. You choose to be fierce, right? Which is to be fearless, take initiative, engage, be relentless, crush approval addiction, and most importantly, you got to execute. And you've got to do it 365 days a year because if you don't, the competition will come in, whether it's the competition in life or the competition in business. Being fierce is a commitment. And so on my birthday four days ago, I decided that I'm going to, I'm going to do this show. I, didn't, I kind of decided a few weeks earlier, but, and that I'm going to take this journey again through Napoleon Hill and several of the other books that I've read. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a junkie when it comes to that and take you guys along on the journey because I've got a lot of big things to do in the next 365 days and I, it's going to take everything in me to pull off some of the deals I've got working right now. But I'm, I'm okay with that because I am committed to it and I wanted to take the committed ones along with me on the journey. Eddie, Rebecca, Chantal from Canada, girlfriend, this is day three. You've been on there at 4.45 in the morning. All right, so yesterday we talked about in the book, um, one of the things that Napoleon Hill talks about, you know, there's really two kinds of people in the world. They're the ones that are fierce and there are ones that are drifters. And so drifters, I think, is what really holds people back. So I'm going to tell you what Napoleon Hill says about drifters. He says, drifters are those who do little with no thinking for themselves. They are drifters. A drifter is one who permits himself to be influenced and controlled by circumstances outside his control. Okay? Um, Once I capture the mind of a child through fear, I weaken the child's ability to reason and to think for himself. And that weakness goes all through his life. Boom. And I said yesterday, how many people do we know that are in therapy at 40 and 50 and 60 years old because of stuff that happened to them in their childhood that they never worked through back then? Okay, Napoleon Hill addresses it. And the magic behind Napoleon Hill and the magic behind this book is that it was in the vault for 75 years. It was considered too controversial to pull out of the vault in 1935. So it wasn't until after his death the death of his wife and the death of his sister that the book was finally released to the Napoleon Hill Foundation where my dear friend Sharon Lecter edited it and annotated it 
And here we go. And it has, it has sent me on a journey. Um, other thing in the comments, I want to know what your guys' big takeaways are from these from these um, from these shows. What are you learning? What is it you want to know more about? What is your takeaway? Because that fuels me. So today I want to talk about the notes. I got up at I was up at four this morning. I'm gonna give it five, but I was up at four. I'm pumped. I've got to be in Las Vegas tomorrow. I'm speaking, so I'm leaving early in the morning, but I'll be on the show. I'm leaving early in the morning, I'm flying out, I'm speaking, and then I'm flying home because I've just got that schedule right now. I'm just insanely busy. But um, so what I want to talk about today, so now you know what a drifter is. A drifter is someone who just blows with the wind, you know. This is a good idea today, that's a good idea tomorrow. This is what I stand for today, this is, you know, but, uh, but I'm not really willing to take a stand, okay. So Hill says, what causes people to drift? The methods... What, are, what methods does the devil use? Now, the devil, again, Subaru Steve always calls me out, and I love It's the proverbial devil. You know, this is not the Christian devil or the non-Christian devil. This is really that, that thing inside of you. You know, Napoleon Hill is questioning that force. He calls it the devil in the book. But, I mean, I believe that he is questioning that, that, that evil force that, force that pulls at us, that, that keeps us from doing all all that we know we're supposed to do and all that we know that we can do, okay? And so here's just some example of what methods the devil uses to cause people to drift. Number one, it starts with your health. He says, I cause people to eat too much food and the wrong sort of food, right? So we, we think about drifters and we think about one of the things when it comes to controlling our mind, it's, it's part of it's controlling our bodies, controlling what we put in our mouth, controlling the amount of exercise we get. Because this is the only body we've got, y'all. And if we don't take care of it, then, you know, we're not going to be around to leave that legacy, which is what I'm really getting to at the root of these shows is to help you build that legacy. Not that end of life story, but that everyday story. You know, the one that you build every single day. All right, if you're just now tuning in, it's Lisa Copeland, Be Fierce 365. If you find value in this show, I just want to say, if you will share it out to your friends, I don't want you to be fierce by yourself. I need you to comment. We got to trick Facebook into those algorithms. I need you to like it, love it, share it, hate it. Ask tough questions. My, my friend Subaru Steve out there, he asks me questions, and I love it, and it makes me better, okay? And I want to welcome those who just joined us. Um, and, oh, God, y'all, I just got a Mac yesterday, so go me. So I'm still learning all of this. Um, so anyways, so health is one thing that causes us to drift. Marriage. I cause people to drift into marriage without a plan or purpose. I cause them to bicker over things like raising children, friends, and social activities. Wow. How many people, how many of us have written, I mean, have um, had those problems in life, right? Especially those of us who got married young savings you know he causes people to drift over money because people spend money freely with no plan you got to have a plan um dominating thoughts he causes people to drift by dominating your thoughts of thinking negatively he dominates your thoughts of fear because remember danger is real right the burning building is real fear is a choice but fear According to psychology today, 94% of what we fear never materializes. It never happens. But we spend 94% of our time letting it occupy our headspace. What the heck is wrong with that? Okay, that's all part of outwitting the devil. What is it that, we're, that we are going to do to take control of our minds and our thoughts, our success, and not drift? Right, and that's why I opened up this show I'm not sure how long I'll cover out winning the devil in this show. I might not cover it maybe for another week and move on to something else. But I think this is so important because it's what binds us up. And let me just tell you, see all my notes in the book. Can you guys see in the highlighting? I can tell you guys right now, I do not love the camera on this phone. I feel like I'm super dark. My hat's crooked. Um, and so anyways, I'll be looking different tomorrow. I think I'll use my other camera again. All right. So, now, remember, this book's written back in 1938, and Sharon Lecter, who edited it and annotated it, was on the show the other day, and she said that when she did the editing of the book, you know, she cut out a lot of stuff about Hitler, because today it wouldn't be as uh, relevant. But one of the things Hill does talk about on page 88, he says, what would happen if Mussolini, Stalin, and Hitler turned, excuse me, yeah, Napoleon Hill asked the devil this, what would happen if Mussolini, Stalin, and Hitler turned traitors 
and the disavowed you and your rule. That would not happen because I have them too well bribed. I'm paying each of them to sop of, <clears throat> with, with the sop of his own vanity. Okay, so he does talk about that, but here is something I find really interesting. So back when this book was written, uh, Franklin Roosevelt was our president, okay? And but think about, and I'm not just talking about our current president, I'm, I'm asking you to think about maybe the last 10 years. Think about how this next stuff I'm gonna talk about, these next comments are so relevant. Um, the question from Napoleon Hill to the devil. Let us come back to the United States and learn something of what you are doing to convert people into the habit of drifting. 1938, people. Um, and, and the devil says, right now I'm paving the way for a dictatorship by sowing the seeds of fear and uncertainty in the minds of people. Napoleon Hill says, through whom are you carrying on your work? This is the one that just puts chills through my entire body. He says, mainly through the president. I'm destroying his influence with the people by causing him to drift on the question of a working agreement between employers and their employees. I can induce him to drift for another year. He will be so thoroughly discredited, I can hand over the country to a dictator. If the president continues to drift, I will paralyze personal freedom in the United States, just as I destroyed it in Spain, Italy, Germany, and England. Wow. Doesn't it seem like every administration that that is the underlying purpose is, is to destroy the credibility of that president? Again, we're not going there, but it just seems to be a common thread. Remember, this is written back in 1935 or 38. Um, and then to kind of wrap this up, then I want to look at some comments. And this is what I thought was really important. This is what Hill says. He says, drifting is the most common cause of failure in every walk of life. I can control anyone whom, whom I can induce to form the habit of drifting on any subject. The reason for this is twofold. First, the drifter is just so much, the drifter is just so much putty in my hands to be molded into whatever pattern I choose because drifting destroys the power of individual initiative. Second, the drifter cannot help from my, from my opposition, or cannot get help from my opposition because the opposition is not attracted to anything so soft and useless. Okay, what did Napoleon Hill know in 1935 or 38 that is so relevant today? You know, uh, for those of you who don't know, good morning, Mr. Benstock. I see you on here, Dave. You know, <clears throat> so for what you for what you guys don't realize, or some of you know Napoleon Hill or you don't, you know his work, right? There's nothing to fear but fear itself. But when he wrote, when he wrote Think and Grow Rich, you know, he took the 500 captains of industry and he interviewed them on on the success principles. Henry Ford, Rockefeller, I mean, the great ones. And he said, you know, what is it that makes you successful? And then he, he compiled it into Think and Grow Rich. But out of Think and Grow Rich, Outwitting the Devil was birthed. Why? Because Hill said, people know what they're supposed to do and they don't do it. And he was kind of fired up about it. But why do people not do what they're supposed to do? It's all right here. It's because they become drifters. Are you a drifter? Do you know people that are drifters? Do you have people that work for you that are drifters? That was the whole premise behind my show, is to be fierce 365 days a year. And as leaders, whether we lead our household, we lead our, our, our churches or synagogues, we lead our businesses, we lead our um, social media groups, we can't be drifters. You've got to be steadfast in what you believe. And the other piece to that is, it doesn't mean I have to believe what you believe and you believe what I believe. But you've got to stand firm on what you believe. Because you see, nobody's going to follow people that don't know how to lead. You know, and, and people that, that believe, you know, whether it was our former president with Obama, he believed. Trump, he believes. You know, you look at the leaders throughout history, they believe. You know, and you're never going to be the flavor of the week. You're never going to be everything to everybody. And I think that that's critical to know. So tomorrow we're going to cover some more of that because my time is up. It's 7 a.m. I'm asking you one more time if you'll reshare this, if you'll comment, if you'll let me, 
give me some comments. Give me some feedback. I love the feedback. I'll spend the next hour this morning working through your feedback and your comments. Share it, like it, love it, hate it. Leave me, leave me uh, feedback. Leave me comments. Um, I want to know your perspective. But I want all of us to commit together to show up every morning at 645 Central, 745 Eastern. And let's commit to be fierce 365 days a year and never, ever drift. Bye-bye.